Do you have joint pain, muscle pain, or neurogenic pain? You may have a nerve that is entrapped due to some of those injuries in the past, and by separating the nerves from the surrounding scar tissue, it may instantly relieve your pain permanently. I know that sounds amazing, right? Well, that's what's next on the Regenerative Warrior Podcast Show. Now, before we get started, please click the subscribe button below and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Now, keep in mind, we offer a money back guarantee on all of our videos, but only to our subscribers. On with the show. Tell us, tell me more about how that works and how it helps people. Yeah, so if, if you think that a nerve, I'm going to use this as an example. So this you know, nerve, can you hold that right there? <laughs> like so it. if this was a nerve, very nice. It's going between my hand or muscles, right? So we have hands. Now, as I move my neck or my body, the nerve needs to move between that. It's not just a nerve, it's nerve, artery, and veins. So you want to have that mobility. Now, if you have inflammation or a tear or a spur, then you can get like adhesions that are kind of between my hands, like little strings, like webs, right? right. So if you have these adhesions as you move, rather than the nerve being able to glide, the nerve is going to get pulled. So hold that, hold that still. Mm -hmm. See how it pulls on the nerve? Just rather than gliding through. So what we can do is just put a needle between my hands, between the fascia, and blow fluid, and pop, pop, pop all those little adhesions. So now the nerve, nerve, can, nerve can move more freely. Um, so, how so long does that last? An un, an un, yeah, an, an unused uh, modality for you know 99% of healthcare right now. And he asked how long it can last. So yep. people will be coming in for the hydrodissection and it's permanent in many, many cases. As long as you hit the most impinged area and blasted it open with fluid, you'll yep. have a complete and complete separation. It's just using fluid instead of a scalpel to open up that space. Yep. And what will happen is it's connective tissue, it's fascia. So it's not elastic tissue that's going to bounce back down on the nerve. It'll stay separated. Are you it's an anatomic thing. Are you using, what, what kind of fluid are you using? Uh, the most common is like a 5% dextrose solution okay. with a little bit, of, little bit of numbing agent. So basically we're just using an inert uh, solution, something that's uh, natural in the body, the same amount of, uh, same solution you might get in an IV, right? If you were, if you were hydrated and went to the hospital. So it's just a natural fluid for the body um, that, uh, a little, just enough lidocaine that make you make it un not hurt, but not enough to make you numb or make your muscles not work. I've heard about people doing this and they're using amniotic fluid. Uh, are you familiar yeah. with that process? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we do that with uh, different types of thing, you know, central products as well. Um, it's not always necessary. If there's nerve uh, damage that needs to be regenerated, then we can use something regenerative like like uh, placental matrix is pretty common for peripheral nerves. Uh, sometimes people will use some stem cell exosomes mm -hmm. as well. And uh, we don't use amniotic fluid, but a lot of offices do. Um, so those are the options that are realistic. And I think the for peripheral nerves, it seems like the placental matrix is the most effective. Uh, we can't not necessarily as effective in the spine or not as safe. So we have other things we use for the spine. So it's uh, there's a hyaluronic acid is another thing that's being used uh, for hydrodissection, which is effective because we're talking about gliding those yep. fascial planes, it's a lubricant, um, right? To glide. That's fascinating. I actually know some people. Where... You okay? Oh yeah, there was a research study that evaluated the effectiveness of nerve growth using saline versus placental tissue matrix. So if you have a place where there was a nerve that was severed or a nerve that was damaged, uh, the placental tissue matrix was 32 times more effective of growing the nerve than just using water saline. So they were able to grow it by 0.16 centimeters yeah. and the 0.02 was the amount that it grew with just using saline. So the regenerative factors are very powerful in nerve regeneration. So do yeah. you, and, that, and it's good not always required because sometimes we just want to create more space, you know? So you have to do what's appropriate for that individual. You know, we're not going to have say, Hey, you're going to do this really expensive thing mm -hmm. when you just need a hydrodissection. So we can just kind of guide you through 
um, what your most effective treatment is. Yeah. And, and how do you know someone will respond to it or, or it's actually something that would help them? Um, well, one thing is like you can look at the nerves and I have, there's typical places where the nerves get impinged. I can watch the nerve being impinged and I can also measure the enlargement or, or of the nerve. I can, I can look at these irregular fascicles within the nerves. So I can identify, Hey, this nerve is, nerve is not normal here. I can see as people move where the nerve gets impinged and where it's stuck. So we have a lot of tools that we can look at in real time, you know, with, uh, with significant magnification so we can see what's happening. And the other thing is when we push on the nerve, along the nerve, the place that's the most impinged is usually the most tender. So I can just use the probe and push. Like, ah, that's the most tender place. That's the most common place to be impinged. Put everything together. And the bottom line is this is a, this is a non-invasive procedure. So the hydrodissection itself is diagnostic. So if I had to dissect that nerve and you feel better, that's probably what you needed, right? Um, it may take more than one time, uh, not to get that one area, but there may be multiple places that the nerve is involved uh, or impinged that need to be addressed. Um, uh, there's something called axonal flow within a nerve, whereas if a nerve is imp impinged in one point, it's harder to get the fluid back through that point, so the nerve below that point can, can become swollen. So if there's a little bit of enlarged nerve. Now that space that the nerve goes through is made for a normal-sized nerve, not this enlarged nerve. So now we have that impingement or, or, or squeezing of the nerve that can happen in multiple places because the nerve is irritated in one place. What is the most common uh, conditions that people uh, that you see right now that this helps with? Well, pretty much nose to toes, you know. Um, I'd say the, the nice thing I'd see, I, I see get some, maybe one person get their grip strength back in their hand and they able to use their hand every week. Yep. Saturday second out of the neck. Um, lower back is, is a common problem where you, um, neck is a common problem. Um, neck pain, lower back pain, uh, leg pain, sciatica, you know, carpal tunnel, you know, just nerve impingements throughout the body, even nerve impingements in the neck and the jaw cause TM problems. So the most effective thing we've seen for uh, TM problems is actually hydrodissection because it's these, these muscles that are vulnerable to that inflammation from an infection and lymph, lymphedema, yep. or lymph or inf inflammation and hypertrophy that can cause those muscles to adhere. And then we have, you know, the trigeminal nerve, the facial nerve, you know, the hypoglossal nerve, all these nerves get caught. And that's really the motor that works your jaw. So if we can decompress those nerves, restore normal muscle function, uh, the jaw and the moves more normally, and you have uh, the ability to get that jaw better. And most of the time, we don't actually have to work on the injury in the joint itself. Um, the other thing that we look at with this TM problem would be that there's a, uh, a greater auricular nerve that pretty much covers right where my hand is. So it's going right around here. So if you have pain here and you think it's TMJ, more often than not, it's that nerve that gets impinged. And it makes a lot of sense why it gets impinged because, you know, if you ever get a cold or flu, this is where you're hurt. And this is where your lymph nodes are at. And that nerve is wrapping right around and going up to the jaw. So that, that infection caused nerve impingement in the neck is pretty common. And uh, it's pretty nice to get somebody relief that's had problems a lot of times for you know, decades. Sorry for the interruption. Have you ever thought about writing a book, but you really didn't know what to write about, or you, you don't believe you're a good writer, or you simply just don't know a simple process to get it done in, say, 30 days or less? Well, if that's you, I may be able to help. I've written over three best-selling books, here's a couple, myself, and helped many other people do the same with a simple process. If you're interested in learning more, simply set up a time to talk to me by going to drrosscarter.com and clicking the Schedule a Button link. Now, by the way, there's no charge or obligation. Just go to drrosscarter.com and schedule a time to talk to me right now before you forget and you know you will. Just pause the show and do it right now. Oh, okay. You did it. Thank you. And we'll talk soon. Um, so when, when you're having a, uh, a treatment, how, how long does it take typically to get a result? Well, it depends. I mean, if you're looking at a hydrodai section because you're releasing a nerve, then you you typically will get you know a result right away. I'll give you an example. I had a a young girl came in and she had symptoms of uh, 
uh, diaphragm dysfunction, hyohernia. Uh, and so she'd been to, you know, you know, over 10 doctors over the, over a year and a half of this problem. Um, very uncomfortable. And so, you know, the first thing I looked at was how is your diaphragm working? Because the diaphragm kind of is a dividing line between the abdominal cavity and the chest cavity. And the diaphragm kind of moves together, hopefully, with, if you think of the way my hand, the space between my hands would be maybe where the stomach goes through or where the aorta goes through. So as if I move unevenly, if I take a breath and one side goes before the other, then I can grab abdominal content and push it into the chest because this one, this diaphragm isn't working um, because the phrenic nerve from the neck is impinged, maybe from an infection or something like that. So when we hydrate dissect the phrenic nerve, instantly the diaphragm works. And then uh, most often, more often than not, problem is solved, you know, that so, hiatal hernia work. Um, so, so that uh, so this, this woman had this procedure done and, right. and it, it took how long to do the actual procedure? Uh, maybe five minutes, <laughs> five to 10 minutes. So, so five to 10 minutes later after she gets started, is there a lot of prep or is there not a lot of prep? Uh, there, well, we have to go and evaluate. So maybe you're looking at like an hour in the office, you know, to figure so, out what the so, problem is. So she walked in with the problem and then an hour later, she didn't have the problem anymore. Correct. And I mean, I've seen, I've seen well over 30 cases of that same picture. Um, and it initially started with a fellow many years ago and he came in and we have good success with uh, abdominal hernia closure, just using PRP to close an uh -huh. abdominal hernia. And uh, so some of his friends had had that, had that issue and they had their hernia closed and he came in to see me and he's like, Hey, you know, I got this hernia. I'm like, okay, we have some success with hernias. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, well, I have a hiatal hernia. I'm like, ah, that's different. <laughs> okay. I said, you know, you, you know, that's that's in your abdomen between chest and abdomen. But you know, the most common thing that would, that causes that is this diaphragm not working. So I checked his diaphragm. Sure enough, it wasn't working on one side. His phrenic nerve was he had paralysis because his phrenic nerve was impinged, yeah. probably because he had some kind of an infection. Um, so we looked at his neck. Not a lot of arthritis, but definitely dysfunction was happening. So we had it dissected you know, C3, C4, C5 nerve root, instantly diaphragm worked again. And, you know, years later, never had to do anything again. That was result of his heartburn, severe heartburn. He was going to have a surgery. And the surgery is not that successful because the, the problem is the diaphragm's not working. So trying to stitch things back together when you don't have function just doesn't seem to last. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have a real solution that's, that's – um, just looking at things from a different perspective. And I think that's really what the guys that, are, that I work with, I work with the MSKUS, a bunch of doctors who are experts in uh, ultrasound we teach internationally. Um, with these guys basically are not satisfied when somebody doesn't get better. So when somebody doesn't get better, like, huh, we don't know something. So every month we go and we do a fresh cadaver dissections, remap and say, we are having problems with this area. Let's do that dissection. Let's inject some dye. Let's prove that this is an anatomical problem. We'll take videos, take pictures, write on it, and uh, then go back to the patient and say, yeah, you know, we didn't know how to address your problem, but we think this could work if you want to do this. And then gradually we, and we figure out something that works and we tell each other and we teach each other. So our, you know, our expansive knowledge is, is growing, you know, by the month significantly. And uh, the other thing is that when you teach all over the world, you get all the technology that everybody else thought of all over the world because there's experts in different places. So you kind of get a nice pool of, of information coming in to really maybe, you know, 10 or 12 uh, expert doctors in the United States um, when we just work together. One thing about it is if, if one of us says we did something, we know we did it because if we, all, we all know what we're doing. Um, if that's the problem, we can reproduce it and reproduce it as many times as we need to. So it makes it more believable when, uh, when somebody has a result for a particular problem. It sounds like some of these results. Could uh, and then like that's where research goes. On. That's where research comes up. What's that? I said, it sounds like some of these, 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 these procedures could be life changing in, in an hour. I mean, we, we, you totally changed yeah. the course of somebody's where their direction is going. Oh yeah. And that's true for, I mean, 
regenerative it takes time for things to heal with regenerative medicine a lot of times, but as far as releasing a nerve, that's an instant change. You know, you couldn't use your hand and now you can use your hand again. I'm Dr. Ross Carter with the Regenerative Warrior Podcast Show. 